Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Ranger. In the last where we found ourselves here in Panula Cave to get to Windtown, and now it's time for another new Pokemon. This is Golem. Golem being the final evolution of the Geodude line does the same attack that the other two did. It rolls in a little bit and then it just does a gigantic throw of a boulder. Pretty easy to dodge, pretty slow Pokemon, just takes a lot of loops. Golem can destroy even big boulders using its extraordinary strength. It is one of my favorite Pokemon for Poke Assist, admittedly. And it's one of the few times you'll actually get to see me use the Ice Poke Assist, which actively freezes Pokemon when you loop them, and if they're especially weak to it, uh, they're frozen for a good while. I think the only Poke Assist I'd never use outright, even if it was like off screen in an edited out battle, was I think the Dark type one, which uh, doubles your line length if you sacrifice some HP. Which I don't think is really worth it for the most part in this game. This is Jinx. Jinx's attack is weird in that it's sort of like Ludicolo's in that the hearts leave the body of loot of Jinx somewhat randomly. But they do eventually explode and cause a little bit of a shockwave of their own out of hearts. Jinx swings its hip as if it's dancing while walking. Beware of its kiss attack. The real nightmare of an enemy to fight, and I recommend you go back and save if you didn't up a moment ago, is the fight coming up. I recommend having a fighting type with you at the very least. Ghost types can be good, but eh. Oh boy. It's Steelix time. But very specifically, it is the Gorak Squad Steelix. Steelix sucks. Takes a lot of loops to begin with, but its only attack is actively touching your capture line because, due to its steel type body, contact with this thing counts as damage. I recommend using a high level puzzle and mine in to stun it long enough, which will also cause the body to kind of loop into itself a little bit, and then using a fighting type Pokey Assist to reduce the amount of loops you need to do, period, to keep up with the stun. Just touching Steelix causes damage, it has a tendency to move in a loop. That fight is a nightmare if you don't do something along those lines. You captured the Steelix. Really? I had received many reports about a Steelix going wild in the cave, so I was conducting an investigation. I don't think there's any question that Steelix caused the tremors. I just don't understand why. I come check on the Steelix and I'll be darned. What do I find? A bright, some lady and stone faced guy filling up our perfect plane. We wanted to shut down the tunnel by making the Steelix set off Quakes galore! Halt, Gorok Squad. Why would you come in and tell us that? <laughs> that just seems self-defeating at that point. Also, this isn't really much of a... pathway to other areas. Yes, the Panula Cave does connect to another area of the game, but it's so out of the way, it's not really a good thoroughfare. <laughs> thoroughfare, I think, is actually the word there. I think I mispronounced that. Oh, well. But now we've reached North Road in one of my favorite songs in the game. And good, because North Road connects directly to our destination. Welcome to Windtown. As soon as I let these Pokemon go. Uh, whoops. It's bitterly cold, but a ranger doesn't whine about it. This is your destination, Windtown. That went pretty smoothly on the whole. That Gorok Squad member fled into the Sekra range. Like it said in the reports from Spencer and Joel, the Gorok Squad secret base is somewhere in the Sekra range. Well, at least we have an idea. Kyle, you're going to be assigned a mission of vital importance for the first time. It's one that you won't be able to accomplish unless you're fully committed. Are you willing to lay it on the line? At this point, I'm along for whatever ride we're on. Kyle, welcome to Windtown. I imagine you encountered many difficult challenges in the cave. The pressures placed on you as a ranger were considerable. However, you overcame them all to stand before me in Windtown. Kyle, I hereby certify you as Ranger Rank 9. Almost at the peak. And uh, this is another favorite level of mine, but it's just for the one reason. For reaching Ranger Rank 9, I'm authorizing the extension of your stylish partner gauge to five segments. Our partner gauge is now completely maxed out. I have your newest mission from Spencer, who should already be inside the Gorok Squad's secret base. Your assignment is to act as a decoy so that Spencer has a better chance of recovering the Super Styler. Your job is to infiltrate the secret base and attract the attention of the Gorok Squad. 
While you create a diversion, Spencer will go in and take back the Super Styler. Even though you're only acting as Spencer's decoy, this mission isn't going to be easy. Sounds like it. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Freddy. My role in this mission is to remain outside the Gorok Squad's secret base and try to attract their attention. In other words, I'll be the outside decoy. Let's use teamwork and get through this mission. According to Spencer's data, their secret base is close to the mountain summit. Freddy, I want you to coordinate with Chris, who's already on the way. Roger, I'm heading out. Kyle, when you're ready, I want you to head for the secret base. Before you leave, it might be a good idea to confer with our rangers upstairs for advice. I mean, the other rangers haven't had too much to say, but I guess it's worth a shot. What do y'all have to say up here? Here's a piece of advice. You've come this far, there's no need to panic now. You may have run into a Pokemon that seems impossible to capture despite your best efforts. If you do, try deliberately slowing down your style's movement so you can watch for your target's attacks. Remember, it's not always about speed. Extra for my big top, I wish you could give me some tips on handling the more challenging captures. I think this is obvious, but I'll ask you anyway. What would you do if another ranger were to ask you about certain kinds of Pokemon? This is what I would do. I'd sneak a look at my browser before I answered. I don't trust my memory all that much, so yeah. That wasn't very helpful. This is our leader, Skarmory. Check out how sharp its eyes look. I get nervous around it because those eyes don't seem to miss anything. Well, yeah, it's a Skarmory. It might not be the best Pokemon use case-wise, but it's a kick-ass looking Pokemon. All right, let's get this mission started. You can go around and talk to the citizens of Windtown, but there's never really a chance you need to do that for anything. Uh, Again, on the first playthrough, I would honestly recommend doing it because it does help build out Fiori more as a region. But because this isn't a super secret written game, it's not super important compared to, say, a mainline RPG. Time for Hideout Infiltration, Mission 9. That cry sounds familiar. Oh, hey, a Charizard. Neat. Charizard, stop. Oh, hey, Aria. Oh, Kyle. The Charizard that just flew off is the one from the Jungle Relic. It looks as if it was more badly injured than we thought. It appears to still be angry and hateful. I tried to capture it so I could help it, but I didn't have any luck. Kyle, you can do it, can't you? Actually, I think it will only listen to you, Kyle. Please save the Charizard before you go to the Go Rock hideout. Sure. Thank you, Kyle. I have a confession. I was ordered by Elita to assist you. Before, I would have agreed, but only reluctantly. But it's different this time. Do you know why? Because I'm realizing that you're actually a ranger worth respecting. I guess this isn't the time to be telling you this. Let's keep moving. Oh, look at that! Some actual, like, character development of some sort. Neat! For now, though, it's time for another new Pokémon. This is Nuzleaf. That was Nuzleaf. <laughs> like c it doesn't take too many loops to capture, but its main attack is throwing a gust of wind forward. Nuzleaf leaps suddenly from tall grass. It creates whirlwinds by spinning. It's one of the few level one gust type uh, field moves too. You know, you only really need that to actively get Oddish out of the ground at some points. And even then I've already caught one, so I don't need to do that. For now though, it's time for Arbok. Arbok is huge and has the same sludge attack we've been seeing since Muck. Its biggest enemy is its size and that whenever you touch the capture line, uh, it actively does its attack immediately. But as you can see, pretty quick capture. Arbok will try to avoid capture by spinning devastating blobs of poison. Not really that devastating, but it's nice to have around, I guess. Oh my. C.10, huh? Hey, you're just the people I need, and my little C. Squad needs exercise. Great workout. I thought I could overwhelm you with superior numbers. I surprisingly underestimated you. I guess you did. Moving on. Oh, hey, the Snorlax. That is meant to be the same one, by the way. It somehow got here from the island. I don't know how. C.10, Hut! You're unlucky to be running into me. My ruthlessly trained band of elites on your positions. So if six didn't work, why would eight work? I was the unlucky one getting a run over by you. I'm surprisingly prone to whining. You're persistent, I'll give you that, though. Not many grunts tackle us twice in a row. See, Dot Ted Hut, I added Nuzleaf as the commander. My cute little troopers charge. This fight can be a little bit of a nightmare for him because now not only you have to contend with the very fast moving C Dots moving all over the place, but the gusts from the Nuzleaf, but as you can see, still pretty quick. My commands got all confused because there were too many Pokemon. I'm surprisingly inept. More like surprisingly self aware. Before we move on, though, we want to come down here and grab at least one of these pile of swine uh, in order to have them in our party for later. 
Oh my god, Shift Tree Street, also known as Shift Tree. Y y you don't say. This is actually one of the best fights in the game for one particular reason. Shift Tree themselves can be actually kind of a nightmare to fight, especially since you mostly only fight them in groups. Because they send out a large string of tornadoes out in a direction near them. Uh, I think it's slightly randomized depending on which direction they're facing. But if you capture multiples at once and do extra loops around them by stunning them, you get ridiculous amounts of experience. I think for this fight in particular, I get over a thousand, which for a non-boss fight is ridiculous. When Shift Tree spreads its palms and spins, it creates powerful whirlwinds. One of the best ways to grind in late game or post game, even starting right now, is to capture these five Shift Tree, free them immediately, leave the room, come back, and do that again over and over. At a thousand per, that stacks up pretty quickly. Come in before you freeze. For waiting, just welcome anytime. Mist House Lodge. This is a bit of a weird thing that's only really shown off here. You might remember in mainline Pokemon games, there are little huts along longer uh, sets of routes that are meant to be like temporary Pokemon centers of sorts, especially in Gen 3 and 4 from memory. This is that. It, that the guy in there, if your health is lower, will recharge your Styler. Quick, quick, capture Neltiria for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't blow your cool, baby. My capture technique is out of this world. Huh? What the? I think I busted my Styler. This fog's like a blanket. Uh, did I cause it? Maybe just a little bit. Look at this thick fog. That's what happens when you anger an Altaria. That thoughtless couple. They would do this when we're in a hurry. We can't head for the summit in this murky fog, though. I don't think it'll clear up unless you capture that Altaria and get it to calm down. Man, there's just all sorts of sub-objectives on this mission. So the Altaria is usually towards the bottom right of this little mini forest here, but notably there are also Swablu around here. Not that they are really much to worry about. Swablu creates gusts to interfere with capture and heads to whatever it notices. Yeah, it has a wind attack and it's a decent Pokemon for a gust ability, but I don't really need it at the moment. What we need to find is the Altaria, and no, not in the bottom right, you up in the top right this time? There you are! It's wandering somewhere usually on the eastern half either way. Altaria can be a bit of a rough fight. Not because it does a lot of damage, even though its attack is pretty effective at hitting you. It's mostly because it's fast, and its attack obscures the vision better than any obscuring vision thing in the game. On top of the fact it has, I think, the widest attack for any attack that does that, like the coughings or the Murkrows. Altaria hides by summoning Dense Fog. It flaps its wings to create gusts, and it's even a level 3 gust ability, which is very rare but super useful. Well, in one case, the fog is lifting. We can climb towards the summit again. You can now release the Altaria. You've polished your technique considerably since I last saw you. Man, you're just throwing compliments out left and right. I'm, I'm surprised. Hey, you! Wait up! Did you, like, maybe capture an Altaria? We would have been seriously toasted if the fog didn't lift. We owe you one. We can get back to our hideout now. Thank you! Should you be telling us that? I don't think they should be telling us that. But I'm glad they told us that. I won't lie, the Sakura range portion right here is probably the part of the game I always forget exists until I actively reach it. Because in my memory, we go from Panula Cave up towards the summit of the Sekra range, which is going to be our destination anyway. And I think it mostly comes down to the fact of this feels like it's the most padding-esque portion of the game that doesn't really add anything to the world or the plot, it's just here to add another little sub-area for you to get through before you reach the next portion. Hmm, gee, I wonder what burned these trees. Was there a forest fire here, or did a Pokémon cause this? Well, look about ten feet this way. Look, over there, it's that Charizard! It looks like it's in terrible pain. I'd like to capture it, but it looks as if it'll try to resist capture. Kyle, can you handle it? I mean, I've done it before. Charizard is actively a different fight now that it's not in the jungle relic. It no longer does the breathing fire up at the air attack, which would rain down from the ground. It now flies around and sends little fireballs out that will just kind of spread out a little bit from where they land. 
This is why I just captured that Poliwhirl a moment ago, because it allows me to do that to it. Again, I love water Poke assists. Charizard, please hold still. You're going to be fine now. We're not here to hurt you. It's okay now. The Charizard's been calmed down. Please release it, but do it gently. Hey, buddy. Bye, buddy. That Charizard seemed happy. That's a big load off my shoulders. Oh, there's no time to lose. We better get moving and find that hideout. Agreed. So yeah, basically my memory of this part of the game always skips that entire forest section and just places me right here. Where golems somehow rain from the sky. If they hit you, you do get massively knocked back and you can get knocked back off a level of the mountain. But thankfully, since you don't take damage outside of battle, it doesn't really matter. Our goal here, though, is to come over here and find ourselves a tangle up. Because we're gonna need to use cross coming up. Also, we can hop down here and capture ourselves a Raichu. Raichu, battle-wise, is much to write home about. Very few loops. If it has an attack, it's a very short-range one. But it's very notable in that it's the best recharger in the game. Raichu discharges electricity to greatly recharge the Styler's energy. It's not a full heal from memory, but it might as well be for most levels. This is the be-all, end-all, if you see one, pick it up for recharging your Styler. And given how easy it is to stick damage in the game's boss fights, it's uh, good to have one or two of those around. Kai, it looks like the Go Rock Squad members are coming out from somewhere ahead. It's weird, though. The doors to the Fiori Temple are firmly shut. There's no getting in or out. There's a waterfall up ahead, but it's on a sheer cliff face. There's no getting across that. I wonder where the Go Rock Squad's coming from. Well, this area isn't that big, so it can't... It has to be from, like, somewhere pretty clear. This entire corner up here, you can technically interact with right now and get decently far into it. But you'll come across a hazard you don't have a way of breaking at this point anyway. So what are you doing? Let me guess, you're playing at being explorers. Or maybe you're playing at being rangers on a mission. Ah, oh, don't bother explaining. Whatever you're playing at, it all ends here. New Pokemon, now we got an Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is pretty fast in this game, and it also highlights an issue with flying type Pokemon we haven't really had to talk about thus far, because they mostly stayed at one elevation. Flying Pokemon in battle can sometimes fly as high as they want in battle, and capturing them at that point becomes a bit of an issue because you need to follow where their sprite is, not where their shadow is. Aerodactyl freely, freely roams the sky while loosing devastating rays. Yeah, I think it has a hyper beam, that's about it for an attack. Not too bad, but not good enough to get near our hideout. So I'll just follow you there, gotcha. I mean, there's not many pads, guy, I mean, come on. You're gonna need at least two Tangela's coming up here, by the way. You could capture a third one, but it's not exactly needed, and look, there's even four around here. The reason you need two is because they place two posts for crossing right next to each other. It's actually one of the few times they actually make you use cross like this. Which is kind of weird in some regards, but not too annoying. And Right, you get off of the tangle. Yeah, th this is something the game does every now and then. Whenever you stand still, the Pokemon after a second will usually try to get around you in a circle so you can freely select clearly which one's which. But sometimes if it's a small enough area, they still stay huddled up and it's kind of annoying to pick which one you're trying to use. Huh? A text message from Elita? Let's see. Oh, Kyle, sorry, I have to return to Windtown immediately. Elita needs help because there aren't enough rangers available. Besides, you can manage quite fine by yourself now. You've become that good. I'm sorry, but I'm going now. Please, be careful. Alright. Time for another rock wall climb with Gligars! They really like doing this idea! But at the top lies our destination. A lot of Spiro. Oh my god. Uh, I got chewed out by the boss again today. You caught me scratching my back with my star. That didn't go over well at all. You caught me goofing off like this. I'd be in for another reprimand. That's enough of a break. Back to work. My guy, your break was like 10 seconds unless you were just wandering about until then. Well, found the base. That was easy. There's an odd bump on the front face of the boulder. Want to try pushing it? Sure. Friend Pokemon can be taken out because now we're entering a new environment. 
I am glad that when Pokemon leave like this, they usually leave all at once, but every now and then you get a case like this, or the Challenge of Destruction, where they leave one at a time and it just feels kind of weird. It's slow. Welcome to the Go Rock base. Chris is already in here, damn. You made it. Good. Spencer's here somewhere. All right. Follow the plan. Create a diversion and go deep. So confusion among the Go Rock squad. Avoid glowing red sensors. Triggering one will send you back here. Be careful. Hmm? Are you supposed to see Silent Chris talk this much? I talk when I need. I get tongue tied around Alita, though. I'm returning to Windtown. I need to plan things with Alita. We're counting on you. All right. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 15, we storm the enemy base. See you guys, then.